Okay. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you're still there in the chat room uh, being patient. Uh, um, we've switched the stream from um, um, my uh, ISP to uh, uh, Matthias's. Uh, so hopefully it's working now. We love to connect. But we're back, and hopefully uh, this will solve the problem. We'll see how it goes. Uh, maybe everybody should just pray that uh, Lord uh, help us with this uh, internet. It's such a it's such a blessing, but it can also be frustrating when it doesn't. I work don't right. see it live. You, anyway, Lord, thank you. I don't see it live. Right. Can I go to your channel, Brother uh, Luke? Okay, uh, Luke. Yeah, Renee, you you weren't here in the beginning, but we I was trying to do this stream through my uh, through my. Uh, Pro, uh, me producing it rather than whole, um, Matthias producing it. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, I, I get that so that we don't have to, uh, um, you know, burden him with it all the time. You know, we can do it if he's not available. So I'm trying that tonight. Uh, everything was working fine, but uh, we we ended up getting a lot of buffering and then losing it. So well, hopefully your, this will fix channel. the problem. Matthias, uh, I guess, let us know if... Uh, that's the problem and you think it's it was i don't see it live is what i'm trying to tell you if i go to your channel What's that? yeah uh okay the, I'm, the chat is saying that they are on, seeing on the, us on right the, now. Um, on the obs Yeah, they're saying they can see us. They're switching. Chat is disabled. Uh, I I refreshed it. It says chat is disabled. Yeah, I went screen. on and just refreshed the page that I was on for his live stream, and it's it's, it's on. on. It's on, y'all. Okay. Well, just I'm refresh the video the that you were in. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I see less fellowship. Somebody I don't here. see anything. Everybody's saying they're back, so. This is chaos. Yeah, I I'm do. I'm going to have to come back out. Oh, okay. All right. I'm okay. Gonna have to. Um, can you, do I hear me? Crips, right. Crips said this is chaos. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys in the chat hear us okay? Yeah, we back. It's it's popping yeah, I again. Stop, I, I don't stopping see it. Streaming. I don't see it. I don't. Hendrix, can you, can you hear us in the you? chat there? Okay, so when I go when I go to Sin City yeah. Preacher, I see nothing. Okay, live. chat room mode. Right, uh, Renee, go to the yeah. the Friday Fellowship and click on yeah. that. That's what I did, and it came right back to it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I don't. It right, says well, streams live seventy-two yes minutes ago. Hendrick says he can hear us. Okay, now I got it. Hold on, I see it now. All right. Well, you I know that's it. the devil. I uh, see switch it. three two one says. I got it. Thank you. Thank you, y'all. Switch three two one says buffering. You, you see that? No, that's on the old video, Luke. You got to refresh. You got to go out and come back in. We're. Yeah. It's spotty though. On my end, uh, Hendrix and, and Switch Three Two One says it's still buffering. Okay, Luke, I don't think you're in the new stream because I'm looking at Hendrix, and he said he had to go his subscriptions and then get back to the stream that way. I'm going to leave and come I back. I see him. Okay, I see you, Luke. Well, I did a minute ago. Oh, okay. Everybody says we're good. All you have to do should, should is I go out and come back come in. Come in. Come in. Right now. Right now. Okay. Hopefully. Deuce. Okay. Deuce. Deuce. Hopefully people will find us. Huh. Well, we'll see. Seems to be working, I think. Everybody in the chat said we're back. We hear you good. Somebody said yay. No more buffering. Yeah. See, all we had to do was boot Brother Luke off his own 
program. <laughs> and... <laughs> All right, cool. So, Miss Lisa. Yes, ma'am. You, you think you could join me Thursday if I'm if I'm up to be able to do our program? Yes, sister. You got to start reading your text. Okay. Well, it's on the charger <laughs> right now. It's on the charger. Okay. Read your text for me. I'll let you get away with that answer. <laughs> yes, sister. I'll be there. Okay, that sounds great. I'll get back to you with a topic. Uh, you got before it. then. All right. Sounds great. All right. Good. So. I'm Someone did have a question in the chat, though. I did want to point that out. Oh, what is it? Uh, it was way back. Let's see. It was Brother Stephen. Figueroa? Yeah. He had a question about uh, Saul. In, uh, okay. I think it was chapter 16 he was referring to. About how the, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord left Saul, and does that mean right. he was not saved? Nope, does not mean that. No, I, I believe I concur, yeah. but that's yeah. that's what the question was. Yeah, I get that a lot too. A lot of people try to use that to say, "See, he left him," meaning he lost salvation, and uh, obviously he left him in regards to directing the ruling. Yeah, ruling the yeah. nation of Israel, and he gave it over to David. Uh, he wouldn't talk to him or advise him. Because he wasn't listening to his advising him anyway. He re he didn't do what the Lord told him to do. If he's not going to do it, why tell you? you right. So, it, but it had nothing to do with salvation. As a matter of fact, the uh, when when uh, uh, the uh, prophet Samuel's spirit was drawn up by the that's uh, right. Mendor, he said, "You and Jonathan, you and your sons will be with me tomorrow." And I'm Amen. pretty sure the prophet was saved. Amen. He's not, and he, Jonathan he's not, too. Yeah, he's not he, in the wicked part. Samuel's not in the wicked part. Right. He's saying he's going to be with us. It's not a and then they, Chris, then you'll have people adding the scripture, saying, see, that's a familiar, no, the familiar spirit was the one working in the witch Andor that brought his Samuel spirit up. That's why she was so shocked that, You're that right. a, a real that's early right. spirit yep. came up, because it was for real. And, yep. and uh, it said that uh, Saul perceived that it was Samuel. Nowhere does it say, because they try to say, see, it was a, a evil, familiar spirit. It wasn't really Samuel. And that proves that Saul was going to be with the evil spirit. See, they do anything to support their false doctrine. Right, of you can lose your salvation. Uh -huh. And, and I, was, I was, I sister, I, got, I saw that uh, just a few weeks ago because somebody had mentioned that. And I was like, ah, -uh, ah, there's a scripture that says Saul uh, told him that tomorrow thy and thy sons will be with me. That's right. And, and, and Samuel was not burning in hell. I don't think anybody Thank makes that you. argument. Thank so he wasn't good. burning with hell. He was in Abraham's bosom. And that's, that's right. where Saul was going. He, he was basically saying, Saul, I got some good news. And I got some bad news. Yeah. The bad news is you and your sons are going to die tomorrow. The good yeah. news is you're going to be with me in paradise. Right. And also Jonathan. Jonathan saved. You know, I mean, David's best friend. Of course, he. you can't say he's lost. You know what I mean? Well, That's scripture, right. the scripture doesn't say he was lost at all. No, not at all. That's what I'm saying. Even if yeah. you wanted to say iffy about Saul. Yeah, well, I'm you know his son Jonathan was for sure saved. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, know? absolutely. And if Saul is in the same place as his saved son, even if you wanted to throw out Samuel, yeah, you know? he, was, he wasn't right. across the Great Gulf. Mm -hmm. Sam, Samuel, Samuel was not just like you guys are saying. They, they can't get the difference between earthly consequence, yeah, and eternal consequence. Like they. They don't get that God's not willing any should perish. He wants everybody saved. So if you're his, you're his forever. And if he saved you, he saved you. Amen. So th they can't get that eternal life really is a free gift. It's not some reward for this. Uh, what is it? Daniel says failed attempts at trying to keep the law. No, you don't get, you know, rewarded with everlasting life because you tried really hard not to sin. Sister Renee, Crazy. I have yes, a question for you. Did How I miss long? Paula here? Uh, I wanted to say hello. I wanted to make sure I wasn't. Yeah, not I, saying. 
Hey, girl. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. All right. Sorry about Sister that. Renee, how long is eternal? Oh, eternal. And how long is never? Never. Everlasting is lasting forever, I guess. I just <laughs> so, don't understand how Jesus, who is God <laughs> manifest in the flesh, declares, I will give unto them eternal life yeah. and they shall never perish. Never. <laughs> and then he goes on to say the father is greater than him uh, and, the, and, and the father is covering them. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I say we see in the, in the new covenant that we're covered by the Holy Spirit. We're sealed to the mm -hmm. day of redemption. So you actually have a picture here of being triply covered. Yep. By well, God Almighty. A liar. And they really think you can lose yourself. I, I don't understand. I don't Do understand. You know how many verses they would have to change if you could lose salvation. Do you know how many verses just in the book of Psalms they'd have to change about how, uh, you know, uh, his promises and he is the fortress and in him we trust and uh, all the promises of, of eternal salvation forever and ever. And then, uh, like you said, the word never shall never perish to will perish if you sin too much. But we don't really know exactly how much sin, but we're just going to say that anyway. Check it this out. Just it. It changed. You'd have to. I did a video two years ago where uh, I took a bunch of famous verses and changed them if lordship was true. Oh, go! I, what what's the name of that video, sister? Oh, that brother oh, did. I, I actually got a lot of flack because it was just my audio and it was a picture of my Christmas tree. So I got a lot of the Hebrew roots yelling at me. Oh my gosh! But, uh, I forgot what it's called. But I might do another one. I, I might do another one. You know, at least that'd be a great one to do. Yeah, it, so, so, we we need to do, we need to do a tag team on that one. I think yeah. maybe that'll be yeah. our topic for Thursday. Yeah. Because they make God a liar. They call him a liar. They say yes. you know shall not come into condemnation, but they say you will come into condemnation. You mm -hmm. have to ask from death to life, but you you haven't really because that life is eternal. So if you could pass back into death and the life you had isn't eternal, so he lied to you again. Well, that that's the scripture I was going to tell you is that if you know if John three sixteen is not enough, if somebody reads John three sixteen and they say, you know, praise God, I'm never going to perish. I'm saved by Christ. They get it. Yeah. If somebody reads John three sixteen and says, but but but, they don't I get it. I want to exactly. Now, now here's the verse, John John five twenty four. It says, whosoever heareth my word and believeth on him. Uh, has passed from death to life and shall not come into judgment. Yeah. So if a saved believer could lose their salvation, then that that one scripture means that the entire word of God is untruthful. That's right. That's right. You would have to tear up at least half of the Bible and throw it away yeah. because you start. Yeah, you start from Genesis with the promised Messiah right. at the fall. That's right. Okay, and mm -hmm. and go well, all can't the way into salvation from service. That's why it doesn't make sense, Lisa. There's no, it doesn't make sense. You would have to tear. It's all about Jesus. It's yeah. it's Genesis to the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and the man picking up sticks on the Sabbath, being put to death. That wouldn't make any sense if it was partly of works. Then right, he would right. say, "You can work a little bit. You can have hey, a little sister bit." Renee, could you address the our yeah, thing? The, the Cain and Abel, that wouldn't make any sense. The fig leaves and the and the the land the animal hit skins, none of that would make sense. Also, none of it would make sense, like Lisa said, from Genesis to Revelation. I also think it's funny that Cain and Abel is one of the first stories in the entire Bible, meaning it's obviously important. Yep, it sure is, baby. That's right. Sister yeah. Renee, um Brother Switch, Brother Switch in the chat says that a lot of people use that go and sin no more on him a lot. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that to him? Yeah. Uh, well, there's, it's said a couple places and one of the places he says, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee." So what does sin bring? Earthly consequence, right? Amen. Another way it said when he's talking to the woman caught in adultery, well, a bunch of guys just wanted to put her to death and he's telling her, don't do it again. I might not be here next time. You know, it's like, go and sin no more. Now, you've been 
forgiven. Now, because you've been forgiven, learn from this and don't do it again, right? Uh, did Jesus think that she would never commit any sin for the rest of her life while she's in her fallen flesh? No, that wasn't the case. It's obvious what he's talking about. He's talking about the sin of adultery. I don't condemn you now. Go and sin no more. Now, don't do it again. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Um, and none of us, all of us that preach, none of us would say, hey, you're living in that sin. Keep at it, buddy. No, we'd say, dude, that's dangerous to you. It's devastating your life. Don't commit that sin. It's going to hurt you. None of us would promote that. But when he said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee, it's clear it's about temporal consequences. you got to remember they were under the law. And when you sinned under the law, a curse fell upon you. You were under a curse. And so uh, people forget that they were still under the bondage of the Levitical law. If anybody thinks they really don't sin, I mean, that, that one reality guy was trying to convince people that Noah and the other ones were righteous and perfect because of their own not sinning for days, weeks, months, years at a time. <laughs> Unbelievable. No. Just an upright lot is that just righteous man. And he, he had sex with two of his daughters and gave birth to two pagan nations. He was not a uh, just righteous man by his own actions. And it's just amazing to me how people will selectively hear this. But what the real situation is, Sister Lisa, is they think we're saying go and sin more. So they got to come back with go and sin no more. Nowhere do any of us ever promote sin. We just aren't sin conscious. We, we don't live in the bondage of fear and constant sin consciousness. We can well, so, Jesus. Sister Renee, I don't even know what to say to that because, I mean, anyone who has walked with the Lord for any period of time, knows that if you even attempt to continue in the practice of sin, especially if the Holy Spirit has brought it to your attention and told you to stop and showed you in the scripture where you're supposed to stop, now he's going to hold you accountable for knowing the truth and he will chastise you. He will make you miserable. You, In fact, you will look up to yourself at one day and go, why am I doing this? I can't even enjoy it anymore. It's mm -hmm. stupidity. It's like a dog returning to their vomit. Mm -hmm. Girl, I had a a viewer, young boy, he came back at me recently and, you know, uh, accusing, you know, I'm not supposed to joke. That's, that's, you know, we're told not to make jokes, like anything he could accuse. And what it was is that he had been condemned in himself because, I, you know, I preach eternal security. He's a very young boy, I think in his late teens. And he said, when I found out and I could be saved and do whatever I want. I went out and started fornicating and getting drunk and doing all this. First of all, one, I questioned whether he was really got it or not. I wasn't sure he had been saved at all. It could have been. I'm not saying just because you do that, it means you're not saved. I just, I'm not sure because he, he, I don't, I'm not, I don't think so because I don't think he got it. But he said, I went out and did all that. Right. And I felt like saying, oh, you, you're going to get saved. Why, why don't you get saved first and then tell me how you feel? What, what's, what, what spirit's moving in you and, and it is motivating you right now? What do you want to do with your life at this moment? What, cause I want to see if you're saved, you know, what, what is it? Most of the time people at least have a desire uh, to go, you know what? I am so grateful to know what Jesus did for me. And now I, I know how much he loves me. And there is a little bit of love that grows for God. So what what I would say when somebody does that is I go, hold up, hold up. Let me get my popcorn. Okay. Come on back. <laughs> like, go ahead. Do your thing. Exactly. Go out there. And I want to hear all about the drama in your life because you're about to tear it up. You're about to have all kinds of stuff fall on your head 
If you get saved, you're a child of God and you're an open rebellion on purpose just because. That's right. I got to get my popcorn because I'm going to hear about this. You're going to get the whooping of your life is what's going to happen. And I'm going to sit right here and laugh and say, I told you so. So it's just silly for them to say that. Just silly. And it's really spiritually immature uh, or unregenerate mind that thinks that way. What's this, Renee? Let's let's, let's, let's let Brother Cripps and Sister Paula chime in on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The send no more thing. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Well, just something real quick. I want to I want to jump in real quick, real quick. What what y'all were just saying. I've noticed. I've noticed an influx in people getting upset by the word obedience. Now, we know that it is the obedience of Christ that saves us. We know it is the shed blood, the death, the burial, and the resurrection that fully please God and makes our payment for salvation. We are saved by Christ alone. But as children of God, obedience should not be a a, a negative, nasty word. I mean, it's really simple. Let me just put it this way. Should I go out and get drunk tonight, hammer drunk, and go fornicate with five different women? No, I shouldn't. Why? Because my heavenly father is not going to be pleased if I do that. Can I do that and still be saved? Yes, but it's foolish to do such. Like, we all fall short. We all fail God daily, multiple times a day. But there should be a desire in our hearts to try to grow in the things that are pleasing to him. And and people are getting upset when I preach that. And all of a sudden, I'm a heretic, and I'm a lord shipper, and I'm a work salvation. You're a legalist. Yes, I, I get that. That's too. foolishness. That, no, yeah, that's foolishness. Really, they go too far, you guys. They go too far. You know, yeah, no, that's no, turning no. the grace of God right. into lasciviousness. Yeah, that's that's Miss Paula. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Um, what verse were you guys talking about? The go and sin no more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when the uh, lordship salvationists they'll use that a lot. Um, but. I mean, that's just practical advice, (laughs) really. Yeah, it's common sense. The reason why she got in trouble in the first place was because of sin. And we're told uh, in the Old Testament, just doing the things of God, doing what he's told you to do will is keeping yourself away from sin. It's just saying like his rules are sort of the rules that we would have as parents for our children. You know, I don't tell my kids don't go around out in the street because I'm trying to prevent them from having fun. No. It's for their benefit. Um, yeah, and the right. same way with the rules of God. Um, so I think that that's good advice for everybody. Go and sin no more. Um, but what they're not seeing, and this is why I don't really, I don't, God bless you guys for dealing with them because <laughs> it's really hard Um these people who honestly have convinced themselves that they don't sin. I mean, it's almost like arguing with someone over the existence of the Easter bunny. You can't really go anywhere when there's not like (laughs) some (laughs) no reality. No, she's right. What do you mean, Paul? There's no basis in reality. So how do you answer them? Yeah, they lowered the standards so much to think they actually are living without sin now. Right, and I mean they're bad enough, but then the Hebrew rooters. I mean, my goodness, you bring I, up. I can't that even deal with that. That they never, never mention, never talk about, and they have some convenient excuse for it. And it's like, dude, and then you know they'll admit it that they're not well some of them will admit that they're not perfect and they're not sinless but they're always talking about like they focus on certain areas like the feasts the feasts. they're not even hebrew i know i i don't (laughs) it's almost like um i think a lot of these false religions rely on this sort of elitist mentality like the catholics are very special because they belong to the one true church so they think and the Hebrew rooters, you know, they're, mm-hmm. they're the true Jews. And, and it gives them this feeling of being special. Even um, yes. Calvinists. Oh, yeah. You way. nailed it. They're the same way. I'm special. And it's like, 
they have a hard time on your I got info. Special to God. Mm -hmm. Not just them. It's like that's not good enough for them. They have to be more special than other people. Mm -hmm. I got info you don't have. Right. Jesus, Jesus reveals who you are. And a, a lot of times there are things in this Bible that if a person doesn't rightly divide the word of truth and they're not of a right spirit and they're not of a contrite heart and they're not willing to be broken, uh, he'll allow you to have a stumbling block. If you if you can see that just looking at the the Israelites wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Because they could, the Bible said they couldn't enter in because of their unbelief. The Lord will allow you to wander in a wilderness if you reject his word and you reject his provision and you reject the truth that he has declared to you. And you, you make all these excuses and come up with these rationales that serve your own prideful you know, desires and means. He'll let you wander around in that never coming into the knowledge of the truth because that's what you really want. The Hebrew roots have the anti-women thing too, the keeping the women in their place. Um, that that goes hand in hand often, and so does polygamy often uh, when it's taken to the extreme. And I I found that that's one of the reasons many people grasp onto it because they think that allows them, you know, the Old Testament polygamy. And so uh, it's it's born of, of pride and of lust uh, as well. I Paula, you nailed it. If I'm more special, I got, but I, I like what Michael does. He finds these obscure laws, like you can't eat from, eat fruit from a tree unless it's been producing fruit for five years. And it was on your property and it's from X amount of miles. And like, there's all these crazy rules that go with it. And you ask them these, it's like, no, 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 you can't pick a choose now. Uh -uh. You got, you got to keep them all. You got to, and they're just deceiving themselves. It says that those that demand you keep the law, they themselves don't keep it. It's just, it, and there's no, there's nothing harder. That is one group I don't really deal with much because their pride is so. They will, they when when they get caught uh, in doing something unscriptural, just don't get it because I understand the Hebrew. And you don't under, they don't speak Hebrew, but they think because, you know, they have con some concordance, they're an expert now, they're a rabbi. So they'll, they'll, uh, they'll pull that. I know, I understand the Old Testament. You don't understand. And like you said, it is all born of pride. It's disgusting. <clears throat> Renee, I'm gonna make, oh, I was going to say, Brother Cripps, I was going to ask you to step in on make you go to work. <laughs> 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 no, you guys are on it. You guys are on it. I was just going to say real quick that uh, what you're talking about, Renee, um, I worked for a company that sold uh, flowers and trees and plants and fruit trees and things like that online for a short period of time and actually had a Hebrew, a real Hebrew, not a Hebrew rooter, but a real Hebrew call in asking me questions about the apple trees in there and how long they have been planted and he was explaining what you're explaining to me, the actual law that you're talking about. And he was wanting to order a tree from us, but he had to make sure that it was, there were all these rules and stipulations uh, bef before he would uh, order a tree. And then once he ordered it and planted it in the ground, there were more rules he had to follow until he could eat the fruit of it. So I, I just wanted to say that, that, that what you're talking about isn't just some obscure thing that nobody knows about. The people that are really practicing it do know about it, and they 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 make it a point to know all that stuff. And you can't ever follow all this all, all the rules. I've not met anyone that can. Then there's uh, rabbinical traditions in the Talmud they've added too. Like um, you can only take x amount of steps on the Sabbath. Um, you can't turn light switch off and on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes, no, your, your mic could cut out a little bit when you were talking. Oh. I was saying there's also man's traditions they've added from the Talmud too. Yeah. You know, like you can only walk a certain amount of steps on the Sabbath or you can't turn off a light switch or you can't, you know, there, each one has their own standard for what's work and what's not, you know, but yeah. they add those too. As well, far as, 
Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Go, go ahead, ahead Brother Cripps. Go ahead. I was just going to say, as far as the, the, the other topic, there's not, mu there's not much I can add to that. You guys just nailed it down. I mean, you know, what, how many more nails can you put in it? Um, bottom line, I can put is, one more. All right, put one more. Put one more. <laughs> go ahead, Paula. Oh, they're, uh, they're the reason that they're sniffing around us is that's all right, Brother Cripps. I forgive you. Uh, the reason they're sniffing around us is they're spying out our liberty, the Bible says, and they're coming around and they're trying to interject these things to try to bring people who are weaker in the faith back into bondage. It ain't going to work on us. We not, not because we're super spiritual or anything like that. We just been around the bush uh, long enough. Okay. And we've been tripped up by that mess uh, yep. before and we know we ain't falling for it again. Yep. And they're coming around to spot our liberty, but that's okay because we're supposed to stir them to jealousy. The Bible says at the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus so that they will come aboard. Good ship Jesus. Hey, sister, I got to tell you all this real quick. I had an Orthodox Jewish man that worked with this law firm out in LA and he got locked into the office and it was the weekend. But because of the Sabbath, he wouldn't get in his car. I mean, he wouldn't call anybody. He wouldn't pick up the phone to call someone. So he couldn't break the Sabbath to pick up the phone to call someone to let his family know that he was safe but stuck in the, this is the kind of thing where I think it's, it's taking the bondage of religion past what is, is the, the spirit of the law. It is. They are turning in, into dead works and dead letter instead of the spirit of the law, because obviously it's a worse sin to allow your family to worry for your safety than it is to pick up a phone. It's a greater sin in my opinion. It's a greater sin than for you to pick up a phone. Yeah, that, that's, to that's not tell crazy people. to me. To not, to not, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that just Jesus had examples like that about them when they asked him, why do your disciples do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And they're plucking the ears of corn and eating it. And they were mad at Jesus. And he said, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Amen. Ooh. Thank you. And also he called out their hypocrisy. In their greed, they would have never allowed one of their animals, which cost them money, to perish if it fell in a ditch. They would do the labor of getting it out of the ditch. And that's all financial. Mm -hmm. That's right. There you go. You know, so well, keeping when the we're law as long as it suited them, you know. Yep. We're here celebrating that we have in Christ and what he has done. Oh, what great things Jesus has done for us. It's not about us. It's Amen. not about our works. The Bible says our works is as filthy rags before the Lord. Amen. It is all about King Jesus and what he did on Calvary. He went and he paid for our sins, was crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day, is ascended and seated at the right hand of the Father, coming power and great glory to judge the quick and the dead and those who have jumped Woo! on board in Praise faith God. simple faith in christ alone like the woman who touched the hem of his garment and she said if i could just touch it i'll be healed Amen. that's the way it is for somebody who is reaching for they're like seeking and saving they want to be saved and they, they just it. reach out for jesus and they call out to him and he will save them and it's Miss just Cheryl. that simple they miss it when it's about what they're doing. They miss it. They miss it all. What you said, so great things he's done. It's all about him, and it's so offensive. Amen. In the book of the Revelation the of Jesus Christ, God, it God, says... Yeah. They're, they 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 go there the, the four and twenty elders are before the throne and they say worthy is the lamb to receive power and riches and glory and honor forever and ever amen it's all about jesus mm -hmm. oh it's fantastic man it's fantastic sister i think a lot of these people have a hard time accepting that because they are going to at some point have to do what Paul did and count all of that, their good works as dung. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to do that because they've, you know. And their knowledge, their knowledge, Paula. And their knowledge like and their good works. And they don't want to, 
just right their knowledge too that's what daniel had to do because he realized he kept offering up all this knowledge to god sort of to prove to god because he was having this internal conflict because he knew he wasn't saved and was just offering up all this knowledge to god to to convince god that he was saved and to give him some peace about it to give him some assurance and um you know god had to lay him flat on his back literally you got a former catholic that can repeat repeat back the gospel and why it's only jesus alone. right alone, but yet will call me in tears and ask me well if i have this thought is that covered too like they have the knowledge like mental but the revelation of what's been done for them is just not in them yet Yes, Sister Renee, the Bible says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. We know the gospel itself. The power is the gospel to those who believe, even to those who believe and call upon his name. But they reject the simplicity of the gospel. How hard can it be if a little child can conceive and hear and receive and believe? How hard can it be? Hey, you guys. I, I'm not sure if I've seen it all. It could just be a partial comment. But looking for truth said the only place I'm going to end up is in the lake of fire. Now, they may earlier have said, if I rely on my works, the only place I'm going to end up is the lake of fire. So I'm looking to see what the beginning of it was. Looking for truth, an angel leader, I'm not sure what she is saying um i think she actually understands the gospel i think she was just trying to make a point but i wanted to um clarify something somebody said gospel not for angels uh i guess that might be some somebody says for natalie somebody may have mentioned the demons will even tremble thing you know out of context and that's why this comment is up here it uh in the chat you guys i'm gonna have to say good night guys i just wanted to um didn't want to interrupt you there but um good to see you chris yeah you guys are nailing it down i i appreciate it It was it was listening to you guys uh really go at it here brother cribs thank you thank you for joining us tonight yeah 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 we need uh, i'll uh i'll reach out to you okay please do have a good night cribs good night good night jason so you guys, I, I would like to maybe uh, clarify. I don't know if they know it, but um, James, when it says, you believe there's one God, thou doest well. The devils believe and also tremble. I got a little bit of a fear. So what a lot of lordship people will say that means is see it's not enough to believe the devils believe and tremble i'm sorry i got chills uh and but that's not what he's saying he's saying you know the devils are aware there's one god that's good i'm glad you know that but that doesn't uh the, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing as people of god the whole thing is their faith without works is dead being alone they aren't performing, walking in the good works that God ordained they should walk in. And so, in a way, he's saying, you know, your faith is no more uh, profitable than the faith of a David with, with their faith, and neither do you. So, I think that's a way that he's saying, well, good for you. You know the truth. Well, the devils know the truth too. Big, big deal. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of think it's just a rebuke uh, that they're not doing what they're told to do. And that's not be a respect their persons and so forth. Uh, it's not saying it's not enough to believe. And plus, believing there's one God is not the gospel anyway. So, and he didn't die for devils. Uh, I was just clarifying it if y'all want to say something about that verse. Amen, Sister Renee. Uh, no, I, I thoroughly concur. People like to throw that one up. Oh, the devils believe. So are, are you saying you're a devil? Because what we're talking about. Ah! Is, 
<laughs> is unto salvation. We're not talking about just uh, having a knowledge of Christ. I know that Caesar Augustus lived. He That's was real, funny. but I don't place my faith and trust in him for salvation. That's not the same thing. Thank you. That but is sister, pretty funny. Yeah, yeah Sister Renee, I, I think it, it's getting late. I think the stream has probably been going on for more than two hours now and or getting close to it. And Brother Luke usually tries to wind it up because of the people who are on the, oh, okay. the East Coast and... Mm -hmm. It's getting late. I know you know that because I think you're out that way. Yeah, 1130 almost. And since we don't have Brother Luke, I, I don't know. Did uh, did somebody well, wish Brother Luke to the cornfield or <laughs> what happened to Brother yeah. Luke? But, oh. Uh, oh. I figure yeah. that's what happened because he moved his computer. He uh, asked what's wrong with me. My fever hit me all of a sudden. My teeth are chattering, baby. I'm all right. It'll go away soon. Oh, we're going to keep you in prayer, sis. Yeah, that's yeah, it. I'll be all right. I think we should let yeah. you That's should what's all... wrong with me, Gia, but I'll be okay. I just took a BC powder. It'll go away. Well, I love you guys. I hope y'all have a good night. Okay, God bless you. Uh, yes. To everyone in the chat, I hope you have a blessed weekend ahead. Uh, and to those prayer requests, I wrote them down, the ones that I saw earlier. I will be praying for y'all, and I hope y'all stay safe this weekend. God bless you all. You too, bro. Yes, and for the sister that was in the chat, Sister Renee, that you pointed out. Yeah, Natalie. Uh, Natalie, I think she was having some difficulty. Um, so let's just keep her in our prayers, mm -hmm. beloved. Um, Is that from England? Is that Natalie from England? Or Canada, one of them. I'm not sure which one that was. I think Luke talked to her one night a couple of months ago. But we're going to keep uh, everyone who needs uplifting in our prayers here tonight in the chat room, or even those that weren't chatting that were listening. Beloved, our prayers are for you that you be encouraged in King Jesus, who is all powerful, all knowing, and strength in whom our sustenance is provided. Trust in him. Uh, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And sometimes we can feel lost. But if you know that Jesus is with you, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Has Sister Paula left yet? No, I'm still here. Okay, Sister Paula, why don't we go ahead and give our uh, let you give your salutation to the chat and the people who are listening? No. All right. Bye, guys. It was fun. Um, I'm sorry that Luke couldn't come back in. Matthias was talking to him, and I guess he's having uh, internet difficulties. I didn't even see him in the chat. Um, so uh, let's pray that he gets that fixed. And Good to see you, Seth. Yeah, it was great that you were able to join us, and I'll be praying for you. And, Thank you. Uh, and your little boy, I saw you on Facebook that he got uh, some glasses today. That's awesome. He looks more mature. <laughs> oh, man. He's so big. He's growing up so much. I can't believe it. My heart feels like it's going to fall out of my chest. Oh, yeah. They grow up fast. Mine will be 12 in a couple of days. So. Oh, my gosh. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Looking forward to that. Uh, not wow. quite a teenager. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was great hanging out with you guys. And I look forward to next friday and you guys in the chat if you um have any questions if we didn't get to them i'm sorry because it was a little wonky tonight but um yeah get your questions or stuff you want to talk about next week and uh let us know and um i look forward to seeing you guys again good night thank you good night sister paula sister renee would you like to say some final words yeah i i'm so glad i got to come in and hang out with you guys for a little bit I miss you so much when I'm not with you. I, I really do get fed. Just just even just being in your presence. It really uh, makes a huge different difference to my spirit. It really, really does. And so I'm, I'm so happy to spend time with you guys. Um, and I, I'm just grateful that I, I was able to be with you tonight. And thank you, Matthias, for your yes. time. Your constant assistance. Yeah, to I make was going to say the same thing. Thank you, Brother Matthias, for your hard work in putting together the stream tonight and keeping us going, even when it uh, it got us, Sister um, 
Renee just said a little wonky on us. Thank you so very much, brother. And to everyone tonight in the chat, thank you again. Apologies if we did not get to your questions. Things were a little crazy and hectic tonight with the, the stream. Hopefully we'll have it together next week. Um, blessings to all of you. As Brother Luke would say, in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.